I think one of the uh, stories from this morning's Prime Minister's questions was the story of Elliot Coburn, the Conservative MP, who uh, drew attention to the huge rise in suicide attempts and successful suicide uh, that's been going on in our country over the last few decades. And uh, he explained how he himself had almost been a victim of this uh, problem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. February marks Emotional Health, Boost Your Self-Esteem and Children's Mental Health Month. In recent years, something like 6,500 people die in the UK each year due to suicide. And in 2021, I was nearly one of them. Luckily, my attempt failed. I was found by family members quickly. I received amazing care at St Helier and Springfield hospitals, didn't do any permanent damage, and was well looked after by the NHS in the months that followed. And I want to take this chance to say thank you to everyone who saved me, and sorry to my family and loved ones who I put through such an awful ordeal. In that moment, I felt alone and scared and like there was no way out, and that the world would be better off without me in it. But I don't recognise that man anymore. I know that nothing is ever really worth that. Help really is out there, and I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> Does the Prime Minister agree that one death by suicide is one too many? And will he send a message from the dispatch box today that whatever you're going through, you are not alone, that help is out there, and better days lie ahead? Well, Mr Speaker... I know the whole House will join me in commending my honourable friend for his bravery in sharing his story. And I can absolutely assure him that we take this issue incredibly seriously. The new suicide prevention strategy ensures that we will have the actions in place to reduce suicide over the next years because we absolutely recognise the impact that it has on people, their families, and we should do everything we can to prevent that from happening. And immediately after the... Prime Minister's questions, I thought it was telling and heartfelt that, first of all, the leader of the opposition crossed the floor to uh, put his arm around Mr Coburn, and then I think Mr Coburn was um, warmly uh, uh, patted on the back by the former Chief Whip, Chris Heaton-Harris, and others as he left the chamber. Um, th there's a lot of affection for him. Uh, and rightly so, it was a very brave move to talk about his own experience in this way. I have been campaigning and encouraging um, uh, people to think very much about the about the pressures and the strains that are placed on people who are involved in entertainment and particularly in reality TV. And too many reality TV participants have found themselves... Um, struggling with serious mental health, and I think to date the the, the figure is nearly 60, 60 people who have killed themselves because of uh, a crisis in this profession and in reality TV, and Britain leads the way, I'm afraid, in promoting reality TV and should also lead the way in trying to uh, rationalise and organise um, a system which can help participants, particularly not only participants who appear in front of the camera, but also those who are runners, who are part of the team of producers who work behind the scenes, and the level of stress that these programmes generate. They are cheap, quickly made television programmes, and they are made very much to a formula, and they are made on the hoof, often. And they are popular, but they are money, they are, they're cash cows for the television industry, for the production companies themselves. And nothing seems to be allowed to get in the way of that. So when the government convened a committee to listen to the problems of the Jeremy Kyle show in Love Island, it only got halfway. It only heard the testimony, essentially, of the production companies. It only heard what production companies wanted government to hear. And 
the committee was disbanded, when the 2019 general election was called, it was never reformed. And a proposal was put forward to Ofcom, obviously, because you throw everything at Ofcom when you don't want to pay attention to what you should be doing. And um, Ofcom have effectively now become the organ that satisfies everything the production companies ever wanted. So now production companies, not only do they have control over people who are in these programs during the filming of the program and in the pe short period before that, but they then continue to maintain control over these people for 18 months. We're told that the problems that people face if they're on reality TV are to do with fame or the loss of fame. I can tell you now, because I was on a reality TV show and I've spoken to people on many different reality TV shows, I have contrib contributed articles to The Independent, uh, I've been interviewed by The Guardian, um, I think by the, by the Daily Mirror or something as well, and, um, and, and some newspapers in other countries. Uh, and I've also contributed to a number of podcasts in this country and abroad, one of which is called The Edge of Reason, and that particularly examines the extraordinarily vicious way in which reality TV has developed over the years. It, its seed is the Milgram experiment uh, where prisoners were, or, um, were, were involved in very contrived experiments and photographed at the same time the, the, the film was heavily edited. And uh, through, th from the very beginning of the very first reality TV show, there was suicide, there was mental health problems, and for the most part these were about the pressures of um, a, a loss of agency, a loss of agency, and the longer people are kept in these shows, the less agency they feel they have in their lives. Agency is taken away from participants because they are told what to do, because they are ordered around, and eventually they become very compliant. I did. And I consider myself to be extremely resilient. And the period, the 18 months following the show, was a grotesque experience. Worse, I said, a long time ago, in, I think, The Independent, I said, it was worse than being held at gunpoint. In my case, um, shortly after that 18 months, I was diagnosed with bowel cancer, and when the tumour was removed, the consultant rather gleefully told me it was, a, it, it was a T3, borderline T4. I was incredibly lucky, and the tumour was removed and um, uh, and the consultant told me that it was it was about 18 months old uh, and, in, and in fact although there was a suspicion that it was a T3 it hadn't actually penetrated the walls of the colon um, so it was barely a T1 in in the event it was enormous but it was I, I was terribly terribly safe I was within millimeters of this thing exploding into the lymph system and and around. I was very, very lucky. I was very, very fortunate. Um, but I uh, do I think reality TV contributed to that? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. A loss of agency. Um, a sense that my life was being controlled by others. Uh, a sense that I was not able to do the things that I'd done beforehand. And as for fame, oh, that's not an issue. And even now, I, I, I find <laughs> I was in London last weekend and I, I was thinking, gosh, nobody seems to have stopped me. And I was sitting on a bus and the person <laughs> next to me asked me if I, if, I, if I was Tim from the circle. And I thought, well, that is extraordinary. It's been five years, and it never quite goes away.
I don't mind that bit. I really don't mind that bit. I think it's my duty um, to be kind and to um, and to answer whatever questions people have to ask. But it's only now, five years later, that I feel I'm getting agency back, that I feel I'm being able to take control of my own life again. That is extraordinary. And some people have it worse than others. And so giving, giving the organization more power to control after the show is over is like, um, is like giving... It, it, it's extraordinary. It's giving an abuser further power. Now, I don't think reality TV production companies are necessarily in the business of abuse. They're in the business of making TV. And making TV is a stressful, demanding experience, and they know what they want, and they know what the audience will like. And we, who participate in that show, we need to recognize our job. Our job is to be produced. Our job is to, is to act and to be directed, but also to be supported. And the only people who can support us are independent unions, independent agents, not the television company, not the production company that makes the program. The moment the program is over, they should get out of the way. And if they can't get out of the way, then the government, the law, should move in to tell them to do so. And I was shocked when I approached the Actors Agency Equity and I asked them who represents reality TV participants. And a man called Fleming, who is still the person in charge of equity, said, well, nobody does. We don't. I said, well, who, who should represent participants of reality TV shows? His response was, well, they're just, they're just performing as themselves. But performing as yourself is still an act. I think that equity should take on the role of representing reality TV performers. Partly because in the 1930s, equity... Um, in the 1960s, equity linked up with the Variety Artists Federation, which is a much older union, which represented anybody who was performing and helped them uh, in the, uh, against the threat of over-demanding production. And nothing is more over-demanding than reality TV. The hours you work on a reality TV show, by the way, are absurd. I was regularly working at three o'clock in the morning. And uh, and, and so having, having uh, linked with the Variety Artists Federation, equity should take on that principle that anybody who is performing deserves union representation. Because there is no there is no other organisation to provide that. In addition, agents should take on the role of providing an independent service to those people who are taken on um, by reality TV. That that I think is essential. We cannot have entertainment, which is such a danger to the entertainers. We cannot. Because if we, when we do, we are endorsing a gladiatorial combat. If we are going to take the move to protect people from suicide, to protect people from mental health problems, then we must, we must rally round and rethink the protection for those people involved in reality TV for those people who are watching reality TV.